You can travel the world and find inspiration everywhere. But for some, the search for ideas ends where it begins, at home. In Addis Ababa, we find an artist going back to his roots. In each canvas, there is something original because you cannot capture every moment. So I try to capture them in a canvas. I cannot capture them in my mind. I'm Fukuro Garomari. I'm an Ethiopian artist. This is my Africa. Fikru is a vibrant contemporary Ethiopian artist who has lived and exhibited around the world. He returned to the capital of Addis Ababa several years ago to build his dream home and reconnect to his hometown. Artist has to be closer to his very historical, his own roots, because it's very important his your roots. Even if you want to paint any kind of have influence like the Western art, but you remain to the to your culture and to to not to be distanced from your culture is very important. So I think that's part of feeling you always drive me to come Ethiopia. And then I, I decided to build finally a house. It's like very big standard. And I was like just created the, the shower and the jacuzzi and the house. And on the side is the back side of this is my studio. And then I take my shower and just rushing through the studio through my bedroom. This house is built piece by piece. It's never built like the whole thing at the same time or designed from the beginning. I think the whole thing of the house now when I sit down and think about it, it comes like this painting. Sometimes the painting tells you where to stop it. So the house is the same process. I try to build it, but I, every day I change my mind. I was very excited. Even I destroy many parts of the house after I build it. It costs money, a lot of money. I have the money to do it. It's like I invested in my, my art. Hey, Chapper. Oh, this is my friend. His name is Chapper. So he's waiting in the morning to get his banana. Chapper, come here. Come here. Come here. I got him about a year and a half ago. I like, I like animals. They're, they're good, you know, as a friend. Especially, especially as an artist when you're alone. It's very tricky, you know. He teach you so many things. I'm proud of the house. Most of my, my, my art collector, when they came, I told them, you, can, you have to come to my house where I live in Ethiopia. And they couldn't even believe that. Oh, is that where you live, Fikru? And I say, yes, sir. You know, the arts pay off. The hard work pay off. This way. You can see beautiful garden from here. When I used to live in France, in Paris, I used to have a very small studio. So all my dream is to get a bigger space and to create the big canvases. Now this studio houses more than 200 of Fikru's paintings. Having achieved international acclaim and recognition, he doesn't feel any pressure to sell them. If the goal is to sell them, I can keep myself in, in Europe or in Paris. The goal is not to sell them. The goal is about the other way around, to protect them even. For Fikru, success came early, winning an award when he was 13 at the International Children's Painting Exhibition in Beijing. This is the school where I grew up and studied. My parents, they see my talent. I start working in a house, I draw, drawing. And then there is a school of fine art for children in Ethiopia. So they took me there. After graduating from the Addis Ababa Fine Art School, he left Ethiopia to study in the United States. But his plans quickly changed. I, I get the reward of the scholarship. I went to university. So what happened is, after I go, I was a little bit disappointed with, with my feelings. I couldn't be comfortable the way I want to do it. So I decided to drop out my, my university. I couldn't do it. It's not because if I cannot do it. I don't want to do it. 
So there is, you know, in art you can learn in two ways. You know, you can learn in the school that they call it a formal education, and you can learn also from by by experiment. Especially when I when I live in Paris, the ten years of my life in Paris give me a big experience, and I learn between the between the different countries. I travel and then. And I think the experience of different culture and the museums, they have tremendous impact on my, on my, on my work, on my knowledge. He's also impacted by the needs of others. Donating this painting to raise money for the Cunningham Foundation, a US-based charity which provides surgery for Ethiopian children with spinal disease. In Denver, we did auction for this painting and we succeed to sell it 37.5 thousand US dollar and we bring that money here and then we choose three children for with this amount of money we send the kids to Ghana for a surgery with, with Dr. X and then the kids they get the surgery and they came back to Ethiopia after the surgery they were the back is curved when they go when they came back is a straight it's like a miracle to see that. And then when they came, I see them, you know, the change. Even I couldn't control my emotion when I see them. It's like, oh my goodness, you know, it's the first time to feel my life is important for other people. And my painting save life. They also inspire another passion of his, cooking. The color what I see here, you know, they go and follow me in the studio sometimes. I cook also for my other friends, they came here in the studio. Being a chef is not my career, but it's my passion. But uh, I found it very quite similar. When you do art, it's like you cook something. When you cook, you do art. For Fikru, his development as an artist remains his primary aim. I want to keep doing what I do to see the maximum the roof, how much I can go. I want to challenge myself, that's it. Now I have a uh, plan to exhibit at the National Museum in Ethiopia. So that kind of exhibition I want now because I'm not about to sell a painting. I'm just about to show what I do and to keep going in the visibility of the art world. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm out of the, the struggling part of artist. I'm more established now with quite comfortable life. So I keep painting. I don't care if they sell or not. <laughs>